Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, Angel Alcoholic. Hi, Angel. Hi, Angel. Yes, Angel. Um, I feel like it wasn't a back here. Um, I'm Angel Alcoholic. 11-1603 is my sobriety date. It's 15 years if you're not good with numbers like myself. Hi, uh-huh. Fly. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm nervous and I do not want to be up here, but I learned years ago that I say yes to service, even though the truth is, is that when Julie asked me, I was like, I might be on vacation. It was like three months ago or two months ago, she asked, and I'm like, I might be gone. She's like, well, how long do you need to know we you going to be gone? But I was like, bleep, okay, I'm going to do it. So um, I'll probably cry because this is really, um, like, it's an honor to be of service of Alcoholics Anonymous, and it's amazing that um, the longer I stay sober, that the more I realize that I'm alive. Um, that I, um, that I've made it this far because I did not think that, um, I would live to 30 and, um, I got sober at 32. So, uh, I just want to say today, um, was super, uh, emotional and grateful and I got to meet a new friend and old friends and just got to be together for somebody celebrating 43 years in the hospital at the VA today. And so a group of us went up there and brought a meeting there. And um, and that's the real deal, right? Like, we surround our people. And so if you're new to Alcoholics Anonymous, welcome home. This is your family. And I can um, truly say that because I'm closer to you, even if I don't know you, <laughs> then you're going to know more about me than my family does. And, um, and that's the deal with this thing. And, of course, I was... I'm nervous and all that stuff up here, but the truth is is that it's not about me. It's about hopefully that somebody hears something in here that um, that will help for even ten minutes when you leave here to stay sober. And I'm so I'm was thinking, you say Patrick say nobody's gonna be here, but it's like where do you go when you're an alcoholic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so that was wishful thinking. I'm just gonna um oh and then I have to say my so the person that um, brought the meeting got new lungs, right? And then my friend, my friend um, who's also a veteran, I used to work in a homeless shelter. I'll get into that stuff. But um, he's dying of COPD, and he happened to be in the same unit. He's not going to die there. He's going to do death with dignity at home, and I'm going to have the honor of holding that man's hand. Um, he was in the same unit and uh, today, and so it was cool because I got to bring some of us, he's, he's, I can't qualify him, but we, you know, brought him down and people got to say hi and, um, he loves that. He loves the attention. But so it was just, my life is really all about contrast, like new lungs, old lungs, um, AA, not AA. I'm really big in the service. And ever since I was little, um, I have been, I just, I, I don't know. It's cause I, my mom was an alcoholic and I just wanted to leave the house or not be there or, um, trying to get <clears throat> the love I wasn't receiving at home. My mom was physically and emotional abusive, and um, I learned really young how to be a really good actress because I had to gauge how I was going to be in the house, how she was, how drunk she was, how hungover she was, whatever it was with her. Um, and I was angry for a long time at my mom about me being an alcoholic because it was her fault. I blamed her for everything my whole life. And I realized today, you know, shortly even after doing the work and I did my fifth step, is that she's an alcoholic too and she did the best she could. And um, I had a child, I got pregnant at 14, I had a child at 15, and I was well on my way. Like, well on my way. I ran away at 13. And um, my mom got clean at that time. And I ran away because she was worse sober, not doing the steps. And um, we got in another physical confrontation and I went upstairs and um, my dad came up and it was the first time he raised his hand to me and he says if you make your mom drink again um, and then I was like and I uh, 
grabbed my Cabbage Patch doll and my suitcase, and I ran away to my friend's house down the street, and I stayed in school for a minute, and then I started uh, dating the guy who sold acid at school, and then I was gone. And my parents didn't know where I was, and um, later I called, I think it was 15 then, I called home, and my little brother answered and said, the Green River Task Force is looking for you, and mom and dad are getting a divorce. And so I was like, oh, it's all my fault. Like, it really is true that kids think when parents get a divorce that it's their fault, which that was a new experience for me because I really didn't care about her. I tried to poison her at one time. I used to have to get her, true story, I used to have to get her pop. Um, I was her maid. I had to get her soda, and I put everything under the kitchen sink in there to try to kill her. Um, I was just, I was, I was, um, I was really hurt. Like, that little child of me is still today. That's what I'm working on. And, uh, she smelt it, and this is when she was sober. She smelt it, and it was, of course, it was my fault. The dishes still had soap in it, and, you know, she'd tear all the dishes out of the thing, and I was just like, damn. So I had to get her new glass, but um, I'm probably going to be all over the place because that's just my brain. Um, these are my mug shots. I carry this on me because I didn't always look this good. But, um, <laughs> This is, if you want to see these out there, they're kind of like, holy cow. And I got these because I take a meeting into King County Jail. Um, and so while I was there, I was like, hey, can I take my mug shot? <laughs> so, and then I carry my detox picture, too. That one's pretty hot. They used to tease me at the front desk at Lakeside with my Polaroid. You know, they take a picture, if you know. And so they put it on the floor at night to keep the rats away. <laughs> And I was like, good thing I had thick skin kind of then. Um, crazy, but I want to read. Some, oh, my God. That's what happens when you get old. In recovery, you got to get glasses and stuff. Um, so this is like, this is my favorite part of the book, and it's just so true for me. And that when I got here, I didn't feel like I had anything to offer anybody. I grew up in a place where I was never enough, didn't have enough, not smart enough, pretty enough, any, all of the fill in the blank. And um, and I really didn't like myself. And I was always in fight, flight, or freeze. And um, usually it was fight. And usually with my family, or usually it was fight with my family, I would flight. Like I just, I couldn't be in that house. And um, so this is on 124, the family afterward. It says, showing others who suffer how we were given help is the very thing which makes life seem so worthwhile to us now. Cling to the thought that in God's hands, the dark past is the greatest possession you have, the key to life and happiness for others. With it, you can avert death and misery for them. To me, that's just super powerful because this is life and death. I um, So when I got sober, I... <sighs> I didn't know what to do with myself, and I had a sponsor who says, go back to school, because you don't think you're smart, and I'm like, uh, but I did what she said, because when I got here, I came in suicidal, tried to take my life many times, obviously didn't work, and um, so I went to North Seattle, and I'm not good with numbers by any means, and so when I missed some school, um, the math class, I just gave up, because that was me, I was like, if I can't do something right, I'm not going to do it. Um, but before that, I was getting good grades. and um, So also part of my story is that I was a hooker forever. Um, started really young. and I've walked the streets. I had an escort service. I had my own website. I've walked the streets. I've looked in the States, like started over, all that stuff. And it was funny because in the hospital, some guy went by his last name that was Hooker. And when they <laughs> called him, I was like, <laughs> you know, was like um, which is weird because I never went by a hooker. Like, hey, Hooker. <laughs> I prefer the term escort because it's so much more classic. Um, but, you know, um, what was I going to say? Oh, so, my, um, so when I, I went to treatment, um, didn't stay sober, um, tried to kill myself, got into an Oxford house in the land angel over there. I had five days sober and, um, my mom took me in for the first time. She had been sober for a minute, and she was taking care of my daughter, the one that I had at 15 for, she was 17 at the time that I got sober. And she took me into her house, and she bought me Reese's peanut butter cups and stuff for leg cramps because I did other things other than alcohol. 
and I was really, really sick. And so my 17-year-old got to watch me be sick. And um, my mom and my grandma just tried to do the best that they could. And my mom didn't understand that the state of Washington had kind of changed because she used to work in the treatment business and thought she could take me into the welfare office and like get me in the treatment. And, um, of course, you have to make an appointment for the Dotsa. And just as I knew what it was like, and I'm very dramatic, and I was very sick at five days trying to hold myself up. And so I'm yelling at the people, I'll just go kill myself in the bathroom. And my mom's like, shut up and sit down. And it was the <laughs> first time that she had tried to help and that she showed up because I was going to end my life. And I called my land angel over there, and he showed up with my mother. And the police came, and I was going to jump out my window. I wouldn't have died, but I was going to jump. I don't know what I was going to do. Um, and I was really mad because I thought I was going to go back to prison because I had drugs. And um, they said that's not the case, and they put me in an ambulance and took me to Harborview, and that was worse than King County Jail. And so I talked my way out of that, and I was going to go back to my little apartment that I had up in Cap Hill and work and get well. And somebody was sitting outside the emergency room, and didn't let me do that. And my mom opened her door. And so my friend, she had hung herself. Um, but before that, she lived in this Oxford house. And um, she got me into the house for five days in federally. That was really far from my stomping grounds. And I hated it there because I had got out of prison and I didn't want to be around women. I didn't trust them. Um, I didn't like my mom. So I was really close with a lot of females. I always felt very judged and my own perception was skewed, right? And it was probably like I held everybody far away. And I went to Catholic school from first to fifth grade. And I remember my first day in sixth grade, these girls were looking down the thing, we're all in gym or something, and they were talking about me. And so I just flipped them the bird. And I was like, welcome to public school. And um, so that was kind of how it went with, I was, I was a loner, right? Because I, I was a hooker and I was alone a lot. But, um, well, um, <laughs> um, not really I made money, but um yeah, so um I got to my first Oxford house and I hated it, but my sponsor said, Do you need to start talking to the women in the house and like don't call me all the time, like talk to them and then I'd say, like, there's a bulimic in the bathroom, there's a crazy lady over here, and she's like, go talk to him, go ask what's up, and one lady, your parents just died, she goes, tell that woman to write a letter to her parents, and then read it to you, if she's willing, so she had me doing all this stuff that I thought was crazy, but she told me what the result would be, and it, and it worked, and so I started to trust her, little by little, and um, she'd also tell me things like, when you go to the gas station, you ask the person behind the counter what their name is, and how their day is, when you go to a restaurant, you ask the server what their name is, and and to this day, I still do that. And um, it's amazing if you don't talk to the server, if you do and you ask them about their life, how they light up because those people get ignored a lot. And um, in sobriety, I've been known to like cuss people out that treat servers bad. <laughs> and it's just like just rude. But um, I'm not perfect in this at all. But um, so I, like I said, I've been to jail multiple times, I've been to prison, I've had three children. Um, one at 15, 17, I put him up for adoption because I didn't want to be on welfare and have two children. I knew where my life was going. And it's an open adoption. And today, my friend who, um, I, I'm very, very forgetful. Um, and so I'm always like going to text this person that might be able to help me get in contact with him. Because of course, through my many geographical movements that, um, I lost my paperwork. And so I've been in touch with the guy and He's trying to help me find him now, and he will be 30 in April. And so, and then at 26, I thought it was a good idea to ask my dealer to help me stop because I hung out with some bikers in Marion, and when I went there, they were all on methamphetamines, which I thought was way worse than what I did. And when I walked in, they were like, oh my God, you look like death, like you're gray. And I'm like, what the? And then I was horrified that those people thought I looked bad. And I was like, whoa, tweaker. Uh, not that I never did that stuff, because I did. I did everything. But I used my money for what I liked, and then I did what you had. Um, <laughs> and so I asked this person to like help me, and he is not one of us. He should probably be in the sister program. But basically, he kidnapped me and held me hostage in my own house. And then he took me to his mother's house and 
That was really um, terrifying, actually. And so I escaped one night, and um, he came and found me and kicked down the door, and the next thing I know, I'm in Vegas. And then a month later, I'm kind of feeling good, but I'm doing other stuff. And then we ended up at a pawn shop. He bought a ring, got down on his knee, and I thought this guy saved my life. So he asked me, and I'm like, yes, like, have a man. And so um, <laughs> I didn't really know him, and he was a con. And when he met me, I was really, really sick, like not like I looked like the jail pitcher. So when I got well, sober, I was like, well, this guy's really sick, like predator, really. And so um, I ended up pregnant, um, and that's my she's 21, and she's in my life, and we have a good relationship. And um, and today I get to show up and. Um, you know, I get to tell my children. My oldest doesn't talk to me. She's decided that at this time in her life she doesn't want to. And when I got was when I got sober at thirty two, she was seventeen, and I started to see her weekly, and she was okay. And then she had the love of her life die, and it, something changed. And so, um, and I got to tell her like I totally get it. I didn't like my mom. I don't know how to be a mom. I was not taught that, and not making excuses for not me being there. But I got to just tell her stuff, and I had already made amends to her prior to this, and. Um, my younger daughter is different and, um, and I don't know how to be mom. I wasn't mothered. Um, and so, uh, okay. I want to talk about like what my life is like today. Um, so when I got sober, I wanted to do some stuff and I didn't make it through school. And so I was living in an Oxford house, another Oxford house. Um, for my crimes, I couldn't live in that fancy place up in Twin Links or whatever. Thank God. But um, I was lucky because my sponsor met me every day, and we used to read at Denny on Market Street, which is sadly not there anymore. Um, and um, I started volunteering. So I lived in Oxford. I watched Animal Planet. I loved the, <laughs> I wanted to be a veterinary technician. And so uh, this girl in my house went to an interview at a um, veterinary hospital, and she came back, and she's like, oh, my God, they wanted me to pick up poop or whatever. I'm like, really? You just take the job because of that? Like, So I went up there, and I'm like, I'll pick up poop. I don't care. And so um, I got the job, and then I was very um, on them about, like, I can draw blood. I can do that. Like, let me. And so when I did, they were like, oh, you're really good. I'm like, no. <laughs> I quickly moved up and was a vet tech. And I got to do, like, x-rays and dentals and, like, just things that I never knew. And um, before that, I volunteered and got at Paws Wildlife, and which I love because I'm, I love nature and I love animals. And there's bald eagles, and they're like, don't make eye contact with wild animals, whatever. And I'm all like, <laughs> like I'm fine with you. Um, I see God in that. Every time I see a hawk or an eagle or something, it's like, I just, it's like, hey, God, because that's where I you know, I, I see God in here and I hear God in here, but in nature is my happy place. Um, and so uh, we had to feed these little chipmunks with um, a syringe, obviously not needle, and the food was brown. And I was having a panic attack, like with this little thing. And, um, and then I just had a moment, I had like 90 days sober, and I'm like, oh, okay, God, like you're showing me there's another use for this. Like it can save lives. And so... Um, that was my journey of like, okay. And then I got to work at the clinic and I had an ex-boyfriend that did the same thing as me. And um, <laughs> he walked in because I had to go in on Sundays and treat the animals because we weren't open Sundays. And there was boxes and boxes of syringes from little tiny to like 60 millimeter. And he just stood there like, I work here. <laughs> and I'm like, I've done the work. Like that, the, this has been lifted. The obsession to use has been lifted for me a long, long time ago, and I tried testing that a couple times when I lived in Oxford um, early on, and I'd get really upset about something probably really stupid, and I would go to Broadway, and I'm like, here's the deal, God. <laughs> I'm like, if I go out there and somebody offers me stuff, like try to sell it, that's a sign. I'm going to do it, and I had quit smoking at the time, and uh, so I went up there, and somebody offered me pot. And I got, I, they got cussed out. <laughs> I was a super fan. I'm like, are you crazy all the times so I lived up here with pot? I never, nobody ever tried to sell me weed up on Broadway before. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, God, I get it. Bought a pack of cigarettes and went home. Did that <laughs> twice. And, um, and it, yeah, just, I didn't, I know there was a purpose, a higher purpose for me to be here. And 
Um, today, um, so through like that job, I sit at that job for three and a half years and people cried when I left. And the only reason I left that job is because um, I was sitting in a meeting and somebody told me they worked with the homeless and I'm very passionate about the homeless. And um, when he went to the bathroom, I stuck my foot out and I'm like, what do you do? And we talked after the meeting and I went to the Salvation Army up in Everett and fed people at a meal. And the um, officer, captain, he watched me talk to the homeless people outside and he's like, you want a job? And I'm like, doing what? Because I didn't know you could like get paid to work with people. I, I didn't understand. No life skills. And so um, he said, well, you sponsor, you know, you knew my story. It's like, well, you sponsor people, case management is the same thing. So I came and followed a case manager and I was like, I totally want to do this, but I need to give my job like a month at least. And um, it was just amazing because coming from a place where you don't think you have anything to offer and then your boss I still have the letter she wrote this incredible letter about me and for some reason in my brain even still today I think people don't like me I think people when I left the Salvation Army when I resigned after seven and a half years um I thought they didn't like me and when the duck crash happened the guy that he bugged the bleep out of me he actually called and said amazing nice things about me and I'm like why do I think people don't like me like why am I what is that in there and um at the Salvation Army so I got my GED in prison and I was writing grants there which I don't know how to do I had help the people in Snohomish County that the lead in HUD would come and sit by me and help like that that community in Snohomish County is really good with the homeless because it's smaller but um, I moved down here to King County and worked at the William Booth Center and um, was a programs manager over tons of vet programs and Fair Start. And I was the boss of like 12 guys at the front desk. We got to hire them. And um, it was just amazing. And like the principles of this stuff and the steps and the things that you guys have taught me, I was a, I was a good um, employee. I was a good employer. I like... Um, just got to, I passed this stuff on through all my stuff. And so while I was there, I started doing yoga myself and then swore I'd never go to school again, but the training was coming up to be a yoga instructor. And I asked the owner, like, what does it look like? Like, what's the test? Like, do I have to speak Sanskrit? Cause that is not happening. <laughs> I'm not going to own it out. I'm not, that's just not my, I can't, I'm like trying to set myself up for failure. Like I can't do it. She goes, the exam's like this. And I was like, I can't do it. And but the men at the William Booth Center, like the veterans and stuff, and I got so much out of yoga myself. I'm like, these guys, you know, these guys could really use it. And so I took it, um, and I was done with the test first because I was so nervous. And um, obviously, I became a yoga instructor. And I asked my boss if I could turn the conference room and to take the carpet out. And we donated the floor, and I got yoga mats donated, and I started teaching yoga. And... Um, they want you to like come in with a theme and like have a class plan and um and i and those men taught me that you know you teach the person not the pose you know my friend that's in the hospital alan he came in with an oxygen tank and i'm like what the hell did i do with that and then you know i had vets with no limbs i had all kinds of people mental health and they're my teachers you know when i in class i'm like forever your student because i am and i and i'm and I'm that way everywhere in my life, like in here. And this is my textbook. This is the big basic text for my life and how to live. And in here it talks about, um, uh, you know, this will solve all your problems. It solves all my drink problems. It solves, um, you know, I've done the steps many times and I've done sister group stuff. And, and this book is, is magical. Every time I read it, it's something new. The first time I'm 64 pages have saved my life, and I have a sponsor who has a sponsor, and um, she's my hero. And um, today, because of that that inner little me, um, I there's things that happen in my life. Like <clears throat> I um, I have PTSD, and I didn't really realize it because this part of my brain is like such so closed. And there's I have sexual trauma in my life that I did not even you know, um, realize that happened until now to 15 years. Like I was out on the streets in California, the dude didn't pay me. So I thought I got ripped off, but no, it was rape. Right. And, um, and that is crazy to 
think that I either deserve that or that that didn't happen to me. And so um, I have outside help, and um, and it talks about that in this book. And uh, I just have to say that because I mean I have there's other traumas I've been held up at gunpoint. I've been you know just I the stuff motorcycle accident. There's just a lot of stuff. My mom that all the stuff we have stuff right. And for me the little person in here is like comes out and it's like I finally figured out why I'm so quick to anger. It's because you know that person in here is just trying to protect themselves. And um, and I hate third person talk or whatever, but I do have an inner child that's super broken. And I don't like feeling feelings. I mean, when I first got sober, I was like, I want to be just happy. That's it. I don't like this. Woo-hoo. You know, I went to the doctor when I first got sober, and they're like, you're bipolar. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, but I thought that I was, and so I was going to take this medicine. But then I started to go to the gym again because I had stopped working out. And then I went to the gym, and I'm like, oh, this could be the photo pass. I need to, like, my brain needs to move. And, um, and that's another important thing is, like, I got sober, I moved my body, it's mind, body, and spirit, not just all in the, it's like physically, right? I didn't get sober to kill myself with food. I um, I want to be a better person, so I'm always doing this stuff, and by no means do I do it perfect. I'm not a perfect mom, I'm not a perfect sponsor, I'm not a perfect sponsee, I'm not the perfect, well, maybe fiance. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I'm going to get married June 5th, and that's a trip. Uh, right? Hooker to housewife. <laughs> yeah. Your dreams can come true, too, ladies. Uh, he's actually my Richard Gere. That's kind of how we met. So, uh, that. I always say our story is like um, Sid and Nancy. Sex for story for you. But no, Sid and Nancy meets pretty women, but... Um, <laughs> There's something else I wanted to read. Jesus, I don't even know where I'm going. But um, this program's amazing. So I don't like to, my experiences is that I got a sponsor. I started working the steps. That sponsor kind of had a meltdown. I was so nervous. I got another sponsor. I started over in the book. That layer of the onion thing, I that was the, I hated that one the most. But it was so true for me because I got a new sponsor a couple times. And I, every time I wanted to start over in the book, every time. And um and I didn't get all the way through. I got to the ninth steps a few times. A couple of sponsors made it all the way through. I've had the sponsor I've had now for um, a long time. And we're working in a, another book. And um, it's helping me. And it's pretty deep. And I have another sponsee that we're reading that same book. And it's like in little chunks, right? Like, like this is... This is just the beginning. And I have 15 years. And if you're new, you don't have to, you know, hopefully... I don't know. Everybody's journey is a journey. I just hope you stay here long enough to figure that out. But um, what else? There was something I wanted to read. Maybe I won't find it. Maybe there's a reason. Um, I'm going to read the... Actually, I'll read this. I'll read what my sponsee gave me because it was an awesome bookmark from... from uh, Bill's house. Um, I mean... Shoot, if I can read it, I was going to pick that up, but I'm back there. Uh, so these are the, um, the four paradoxes. We surrender to win. We give it away to keep. We give away to keep. We suffer to get well, and we die to live. And I would read the small part, but I can't see it. The rest is really good. So, uh, so I, I have a minute and 34 seconds, but I'm just going to be done. I'm just super grateful. Um, hopefully that kind of made sense and that, uh, yeah, happy St. Patty's Day. And yeah. thank you for asking me to come even though I didn't want to do it. And like I'm <laughs> spitting out and all the great stuff. But, uh, so don't hug me. I'll be hugging you like this. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, thank you. I'm done. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.